Today I have the pleasure of speaking with George Putnam from Scandium International. George, how are you today? I'm great, Tracy. Good afternoon. Of course, the U.S.-China trade agreement is talking about exporting scandium and yttrium to China from the U.S. So let's just start there. George, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, we're learning this along with uh, the rest of the world today. It looks like uh, scandium and yttrium have been called out specifically in the latest uh, trade deal between China and the U.S. Um, I think this is very encouraging to uh, to scandium developers. It's probably the specifics of this were probably designed to accommodate and ensure Molycorp could send concentrates to China. But that said, um, this is uh, this is positive for everybody in the in the scandium space. We don't want to dismiss this as unimportant. Uh, we certainly don't. Well, based on the number of emails I'm getting today, I'm going to assume that it is quite important. Uh, we're cheering for rare earths, of course, anytime they get political leaders' attention. Now, with regards to where we will get the scandium from the U.S. to export to China, can you tell us where the source will be? There are, as you point out, uh, several other potential sources of scandium in the U.S., and uh, I can uh, I can I can give you a quick list. There's uh, there's some folks uh, looking for scandium in coal fly ash, and we have actually done a little bit of work there too. You can recover scandium from that. Of course, that is a ubiquitous uh, recyclable material in the U.S. and elsewhere. Uh, Texas Mineral Resources uh, has uh, the potential they uh, they claim to make scandium in their project alongside other critical metals and, and rare earths. That could be one. Niocorp, of course, the Elk Creek Mine has got scandium figuring prominently in their economics and their project. We um, we look for scandium too in the United States. It's uh, there there are some opportunities here. We're um, we have one. Uh, we have an idea that could produce scandium and some other critical metals. Uh, I'll leave it at that until it's a little bit more developed uh, in our minds and in a, in, a, in a program. Until then, though, we are just laser focused on building the markets for scandium sales from our Australian project, the Ningen Scandium Project. It's interesting to... Um, to contemplate whether this trade deal could possibly touch both Canadian producers and Australian producers as allies to the United States. Wouldn't and thank you. That was my next question. You're going right in there, and I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. So for many of the listeners out there, they may not be as familiar with these rare earths as you are, for instance, and of course, what is happening in Australia. So Australia and Canada as partners have been all over the news lately. So now talk to me, but if you wouldn't mind separating it into two different topics, which is how this might impact Canadians and how it might impact uh, Australians, because I think the, uh, the outcome may actually be quite different. Well, I'll be interested in your thoughts on that. But uh, as far as as far as getting uh, publishing notoriety or but publishing publishing positive news on Scandium, it's going to help them both. Both countries have uh, uh, prospects for uh, Scandium production in the near to intermediate term. Uh, and of course, we like to think of ourselves as at the front end of that effort in in Australia. There have also been uh, initiatives that have hit the news with respect to financing, and the U.S. Commerce Department has uh, has 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 published positive um, initiatives with both Australia and with Canada on uh, in encouraging and supporting the development of critical metals critical metals projects, including scandium. Uh, these are related events. These are, these, are all, um, these are all pulling in a positive direction for us in particular and for scandium in, uh, in general. Okay, so back to my, my point about Australia. Uh, there's been a lot of reports in the press and on the different uh, sites and boards that the Australians are really leading and going after some of the uh, uh, 
uh, Department of Defense applications. There's a number of deadlines here that they announced recently with the National Defense Authorization Act. And it seems like the Australians have a leg up on the Canadians. What are your thoughts? You're an American. You can talk to us about this. Well, I, I, I would explain it um, simply as though the Australians have been at this project for longer than the Canadians have. Uh, the, that New South Wales clay belt in which we're a member and some other, uh, some other companies are as well, has been uh, explored for scandium for the last 10 years and actively so in the last five. I, I just think we have more time at the wheel with respect to scandium in Australia than the Canadians have. Uh, but the Canadians are catching up and it's all accretive. I mean, we carve a path which we all follow. So um, who's first and who's second is uh, matters less than the fact that uh, we're, all, uh, we're all working towards the same end here. Well, it does, except for the fact who is going to be exporting the scandium from the U.S. to China. So for instance, could the Americans take scandium from Australia or could they take it from Canada and then count that as their part of the deal? Well, it's an interesting question. I think it probably doesn't help anybody to recycle scandium through China. The difference between scandium and, and rare earths is that rare earths uh, miners form a concentrate and then they look for somebody to refine it. The Chinese happen to be very good and very prominent in that space. In scandium, all the scandium producers are going to produce an oxide powder and some may produce a master alloy from that. But these are semi-finished or finished products, scandium only products. We don't need to go hunting a refiner in China. Uh, I'm more interested in selling scandium to China because I think China could be a tremendous market for the use and consumption of scandium. You know, scandium, uh, China makes two-thirds of the world's available supply today they of scandium. They make approximately half of the world's aluminum. I mean, that makes them a market for scandium, period. Um, whether scandium, whether, whether China stays a net exporter of scandium as they are today or becomes a net importer over time, doesn't matter so much. This is this is a game of consumption. We want to see the consumption of scandium go up, and and China may well play a play a role in that. This 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 trade deal is just uh, one little element in that. The the good news is people are listening. People are people understand what scandium is now. It's on the radar as a critical metal and a critical material, and we're pleased to see it happen. And George, thank you so much for your update. I do appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Tracy.